if the plaintiffs win, the state would have to recognize same-sex marriages so long as it continues to recognize opposite-sex marriages. Uh, and obviously if the state wins, then they could continue to refuse to recognize same-sex marriages. If the court rules uh, that this is a decision for the states, uh, I think the consequences will be uh, minimal. I think what you'll have then is that states and their citizens will continue to debate this issue. And you've already seen a lot of democratic change on this issue. The real consequences you'll see, you're already seeing uh, in uh, debates over religious freedom laws, where you see people who say, look, uh, if we're going to have same-sex marriage, fine, but you can't make me participate in a same-sex marriage. You can't make me cater a same-sex wedding. You can't make me photograph a same-sex wedding. Why? Because I have a conscience-based uh, objection to participating in something that I don't think is a real marriage. Please go down the street to another photographer. Please go down the street to another caterer. Uh, just please don't make me uh, participate in it. Neither vendors, nor photographers, nor wedding planners are at issue with respect to this decision on same-sex marriage because that decision and the 14th Amendment more generally applies only to discrimination by the government, it does not apply to private discrimination. The Solicitor General was asked during oral argument whether if the court constitutionally recognized a right to same-sex marriage, would religious organizations be in danger of losing their tax-exempt status? He said, well, no, I think it will be an issue. I think the Solicitor General's comment ought to be reason alone for doubting whether the Supreme Court ought to go so far as to recognize a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Because as the Solicitor General seemed to indicate, if the court constitutionalizes same-sex marriage, that could be a reason for the government to start stripping churches tax-exempt status. And that's profoundly disturbing. It could potentially be an issue, but I think at least at this point it has been somewhat overblown. If you look at the next part of Verrilli's remarks, which never get quoted, he said that uh, whether this actually happens depends on whether the state or the federal government in question has an anti-discrimination law that applies to sexual orientation. The federal government currently does not have such a law, neither do many states. But if you think this is a problem, and I think to some extent I do, uh, then what you should do is fight to constrain and limit anti-discrimination laws that apply to the private sector.